resident microorganism and here we start talking about the importance of antimicrobial incise drape and uh, according to the guidelines and the clinical research one of these clinical studies conducted in italy which is called the pico study or bishko study it is an italian study conducted between 2008 to 2015 targeting 5100 patients divided into two group the first group without iopan antimicrobial incised drape and the second group with iopan and here we can see Significant reduction in surgical site infection from 6.5% to 1.9%. We are talking about almost 71% reduction in the surgical site infection in cardiac surgery. Adding to that, the clinical study actually talking about uh, very uh, important uh, uh, numbers as well. For example, if we take uh, the VAC therapy in the group E35, uh, we are talking about 35 patients require VAC therapy after surgery. Meanwhile, the group which is uh, apply uh, with uh, IOPAN as antimicrobial incised rape, nine person, nine person only require VAC therapy after surgery. So uh, not only the surgical site infection rate reduction, but on the same study, they found out that reduction in the cost per one patient around, we are talking about around 700 plus euro per one patient. So this is one of the main uh, uh, objective actually as a health care facility that we need to increase the patient outcome and on the same time to reduce the cost as well. So by implementing this such uh, kind of uh, solutions or technology that we have in the market right now looks like antimicrobial incised rape, we are not only protecting uh, the patient from uh, uh, the SSI, adding to that, we are um, uh, reducing the cost as well. Uh, and here we can uh, uh, figure out the importance or the value of antimicrobial incised rape, which we apply it after we apply the uh, normal drip. So, uh, moving forward to the uh, intraoperative uh, measures, uh, looks like operating room, uh, environment ventilation, and the surgical attire and the surgical asepsis as well. One of the most important points nowadays is talking about the importance of normal body temperature, maintaining normal body temperature. And if we are recalled together, the international surgical site infection, which is called CATS, CATS means C from clipping, A antibiotic, T temperature, and uh, S from sugar. So we, we can see that temperature monitoring is considered one of the, the only international surgical site infection bundle. So the importance of keeping a patient normothermic, and here we can see that uh, uh, normothermia is becoming one of the ERAS uh, protocol, <clears throat> and here we can see different guidelines and recommendation how we can keep the patient normothermic pre, intra, and post-operative as well. And just to brief, the most important point related to the normothermia, starting by uh, continuous core body temperature monitoring, and this is the way how we can guide if our patient needs some type of warming or not through so, uh, continuous monitoring of the core body temperature. And uh, if the patient require any type of the warming, it is recommended nowadays to start it from before induction of an acidic agent, which is called pre-warming technique. And the pre-warming technique means that we need to increase the temperature of the extremities, not to increase the core body temperature, just we need to increase the temperature of the peripheral uh, at least for 10 to 20 minutes before induction of an acidic agent. And then we need to keep the patient normothermic intraoperative and postoperative by different uh, warming uh, blankets during the surgery. Adding to that, if if we have any infusion uh, for blood product or uh, fluid to the patient, we have to warm it up to 37 degrees Celsius according to the uh, guidelines. And in this clinical study, we can see the difference between uh, the patient who gets some type of pre-warming before induction of an acidic agent and the patient who get warming during the surgery and after surgery only. If we have a look to the right side, we can see that uh, this is one of uh, clinical study conducted in Germany by Professor Grota targeting uh, 7,000 plus patients divided into two groups. The first group uh, do warming intraoperative only. 
and the post operative and here we can see 30% get uh, normothermic intraoperative and 12% get uh, hypothermic post operative after we implement the practice of pre warming or to warm the patient before induction of an acidic agent, we can see significant reduction, about 52% intraoperative reduction in hypothermia rate and postoperative 41% reduction in the postoperative hypothermia rate. And this is actually clarified to us the importance of pre warming. And why we need the pre warming? Because of that, uh, once we do induction of an acetic agent, an acetic agent leading to uh, vasodilatation, this vasodilatation uh, leading to what is called redistribution temperature drop. The core warm blood move from the core to the cold periphery, this leading to significant reduction in the core body temperature by around 1.6 degree. Celsius in during the first hour after induction of an acetic agent. So that ERAS protocol is strongly recommended to rewarm the patient at least for 10 to 20 minutes before induction of an acetic agent. And this pre-warming, it could be conducted in the surgical ward uh, or in the receiving area or inside the operating room before induction of an acetic agent. On the same time, we don't have any uh, clear uh, or strong evidence say that uh, forced air warming technology, for example, from Berhager, increase the risk of SSI. There is no any uh, uh, strong evidence uh, proven that the forced air warming might increase SSI. So according to the NICE guidelines, which is considered one of the most strongest guidelines related to the temperature management, they are to recommend the forced air warming technology in warming the patient because they found it based on 200 plus clinical studies and 170 plus round uh, randomized controlled trials. They found the forced air warming technology safe, effectiveness and participate in the SSI rate reduction. And here we can uh, see the uh, uh, Mahoney study. It's a study conducted in UK, uh, found out how clarifying uh, that keeps the patient normothermic actually reduce the cost of the complications that might happen to the patient because of the hypothermia. For example, uh, to treat the cardiac event, to treat the blood transfusion, or even to treat the cost of surgical site infection by keeping the patient normothermic means 36 degree plus we are going to uh, increase the patient outcomes and the quality of life and on the same time we will reduce the uh, cost of treat any complications could happen to the patient because of the hypothermia uh, according to the post-operative measures uh, we, we we mentioned a little bit about uh, antibiotic prophylactic and uh, what we are going to focus the incision care or uh, how we can take care of the wound after the surgery and for sure professor lubani uh, took too much uh, took too much with us about the importance and the value of uh, reducing the risk of ssi post operative by negative pressure technology and here we can see that according to the who checklist they recommend that incision wound uh the management of the wound after surgery by a negative pressure which means that it is something recommended by guidelines because they found out uh, supported by different clinical research and the clinical guidelines reducing the risk of ssi after surgery and he do some highlight about the uh, brevina uh, dressing and we can see that uh, uh, Brevina is mainly uh, recommended for high risk uh, surgery and high risk patient. And this is how it looks like the dressing. It uh, consists of a foam uh, polyester that uh, will be direct touch with the incision area and interface layer, the stabilizer layer and adhesive uh, foam. And this foam, it is already uh, embedded with uh, silver ions where to uh, reduce and uh, the count of the microorganism and reduce the risk of the surgical site infection, both operative as well. 
And from these slides, we can uh, uh, figure out that the importance of uh, Brevina as a negative uh, pressure therapy, uh, mainly for, as we mentioned, for the high risk uh, patient, the patient with, which is already have coming with high uh, related risk factor and for the high risk surgeries as well. So we are talking about a full solutions or a full bundle, pre and post that might increase uh, uh, the patient outcomes and reduce the risk of surgical site infection. And actually this will take us to the uh, so this, this section of the solutions uh, from Solventum company X3M. Uh, we have uh, a full bundle, as we mentioned, uh, taking care of uh, the patient preparation. We are talking about Avagard chlorhexine gluconate as a surgical hand hygiene before the surgery. We have the 3, uh, 3M surgical caliber for hair removal, and we have the surgical prepping agent as antiseptic to prep the patient's skin before the incision. We have the IUPAN as antimicrobial incised drape, and we have a full range of patient warming bear hugger blanket and ranger for fluid warming. And for sure, we have the Brevina dressing for post-operative. Uh, Avagard, the chlorhexine gluconate or CHG from 3M, it's a waterless, brushless, scrubless. And the most important value uh, behind Avagard that it is already increased the compliance to the surgical hand hygiene because we don't need to use water or brushing. Just according to the infection control measurement, we need to wash our hand uh, to remove by normal water and soap just to, to remove any dirty thing from our hand and the dry well. And then we start to do scrubbing by Avagard directly. And as you can see, Avagard is coming mounted like that on a foot pump. Every person need three foot bump to cover both of your hand and uh, uh, both of your arm and hands as well. The two active ingredients in Avagard, it's alcohol, which provide you with fast decaying of microorganisms. Chlorhexine gluconate provide you with a persistence effectiveness up to six hours under the gloves. Adding to that, these two active ingredients are embedded in emollient rich lotion base to preserve the skin integrity and protect your skin from any dryness or roughness could happen. So we are talking about a complete solution. Increase the compliance to the surgical hand hygiene, fast, fast action because of the alcohol, persistence effectiveness up to six hours because of caloric zinc gluconate, preserve the skin integrity and protect the skin from any damage or roughness or irritation could happen because of the emollient rich lotion base. And cost saving as well, this bottle can cover 84 person. This bottle 500 ml can cover 84 person. And on the same side, according to one of the most recent clinical studies conducted in Houston uh, University Hospital, they found out that Continuous using Avagard CTG will decrease the risk for surgical site infection in open surgery patient by 5%. So this is how it looks like whenever we start uh, uh, elaborate more about the uh, technology and utilizing the different technology and the solutions in the market. So it's considered a fully alternative for the uh, traditional scrubbing method. The second solution related to the clipper, there is no big science actually behind the, the clipper. It's just a clipper to, to do hair removal. Uh, the only point that I would like to, to highlight according to the head of this clipper, which is pivoting or movable head, so that it can be do hair removal for the patient without leading to any nicks or cuts on the patient skin. And for sure, it is disposable to avoid any cross contamination between to be between uh, the patients. For the skin antiseptic agent, we have two main applicators. We have the DuraPrep applicator. Uh, it consists of alcohol for fast killing of the microorganism and iodine bovacrylics, which provide your patient with persistence effectiveness up to 12 hours during the surgery. And I, I, I started already, I have been started with this uh, uh, picture just to uh, clarify the difference between the normal bovidine iodine and DuraPrep from 3M company. Uh, 3M DuraPrep, uh, for bovidine iodine, uh, the application technique is totally different. Even the active ingredient is totally different. 
Uh, when we start dealing with bovidine iodine, we have to do scrubbing, maybe for two minutes or three minutes to cover the areas that we need to cover. And then we have to leave it till it's completely dry. The normal bovidine iodine, 7% or 10%, till it's completely dry, it might take five to six minutes. And for sure, we don't have this luxury of time inside the operating room. But actually, this is not the only challenge coming from the normal bovidine iodine. The main challenge coming that bovidine iodine as a molecule, it is water soluble. What does it mean? It means that once we start the incision and the layer of bovidine iodine come contact with body fluid, blood, and the normal saline, it will be washed off, which means that during the surgery, your patient does not have any existing protection from the antiseptic agent because of the bovidine iodine. It is already washed off because it is water soluble. In Dura Prep from 3M, we do change on the carrier of the iodine from bovidone to bovacrylics. And this is the carrier of iodine in Dura Prep applicator from solventum. The bovacrylics, once we apply on the patient skin and they let it dry, it will be dry to water insoluble film. This film looks like a barrier. So whenever it comes contact with the body fluid or blood or normal saline, it will not be washed off. It will be remain on the patient's skin up to 12 hours during the surgery, and it will not be activate, inactivated by the blood or fats or protein. Adding to that, it will immobilize the bacteria remaining on the skin and enhance the drape adhesion during the surgery. And securing the drape during the surgery, it's a crucial thing. According to clinical research, they found out that drip lifting participate into 25% increase in the surgical site infection. So if I would like to paraphrase the importance or the value of the DuraPrip, first of all, it is already available in a trial applicator, single use applicator, which is meet and exceed the criteria from WHO, CDC, ARN guidelines. It consists of two active ingredients, Again, it meets the recommendation from guidelines. Alcohol for fast killing of the microorganism. Iodine, bovacrylics, and here we need to highlight on the carrier of iodine, which is called the bovacrylics. Bovacrylics will be remain on the patient's skin. It will not be washed off by the body fluid, normal saline, irrigation solution, and provide the patient with a protection up to 12 hours. DuraPrep can be used for all type of surgeries, except uh, we cannot use it in open wound. We cannot use it on a patient has a sensitivity to iodine, and we cannot use it in mucous membrane. So the other type of surgeries, for sure, DuraPrep will be fit to provide your patient with the needed protection on the same time to reduce the risk of the surgical site infection. And according to the application, it's totally different from the bovidine iodine. Bovidine iodine need to do scrubbing back and forth, back and forth. Meanwhile, Dura Prep just the painting, starting from the incision site toward the periphery. No need to do scrubbing. No need to go over the area that you already prepped uh, before. Just the painting to cover all the areas that you need to cover. This applicator can cover 37.5 centimeter by 75 centimeter. We are talking about a very large area from neck to bottom. And this for sure meets the uh, recommendation uh, for patient prepping that we need to cover area more than uh, for sure the uh, area of the incision site only. And here's some of the clinical evidence for the Dura Prep. Looks like the Swenson uh, study in 2009 found out that Dura Prep participating in reduction in the surgical site infection comparing with the chlorhexene gluconate, and the other one, which is the Stahl hospital uh, Stahl study, showing that the Dura Prep is more resistant to normal saline and uh, other body fluid more than the chlorhexene gluconate. But just to be aligned. 100% was the recommendation from GDIBC team and Minister of Health of Saudi. They are giving the priority to the alcohol with caloric zinc gluconate. In case your patient has a sensitivity to CTG, you can move it easily to the Dura Prep because both of them are meet the recommendation from the guidelines. Adding to that, we have the second portfolio, which is 
include uh, alcohol and chloric zinc gluconate as a single use applicator as well, which is called the Soluprep. 2% chloric zinc gluconate and 70% alcohol for fast killing of the microorganism. And the chloric zinc gluconate provide protection up to 72 hours. And the applicator is trial and the single use as well, and they can cover 52 by 52 centimeters. When we come to uh, Iopan as antimicrobial incised drape, and as you can see from the slide that after we do draping, then we will start to apply the Iopan over the drape so that we are going to provide more securement to the drape during the surgery. And then Iopan will be direct to touch on the patient skin. So the IOD4 in Iopan will be continuously release during the journey of surgery. So in just any uh, microorganism start to grow or migrate from the deep layer of the skin, for sure it will be facing by the IOD4 molecule, leading to creating a trial field, reducing the count of microorganisms, prevent the regrowth of the resident microorganism during the surgery. So all these protection, uh, reducing the risk of, of the surgical set infection during the surgery. So we have uh, continuous and controlled antimicrobial activity during the procedure provided to our patients. So we are talking about a full solutions uh, covering um, the patient during the surgery. And after that, uh, after surgery, I'm not sure if this will uh, work with you. Just let me know if the video will be clear or voice. Yes, tutor. I have instructions. Uh, as you can see that uh, guys as you can see that that we already implemented the iopan directly over the patient skin the, there is no should be any uh, barrier between the iopan and the patient skin after we uh, 
uh, apply the normal drape, the blue one, and then we start apply the IUPAN. So through this window, which is come direct to touch with the patient skin, the IUD4 will be started to uh, penetrate the patient deep layer of the skin, reducing the risk of the microgrids coming from the skin as itself and from the deep layer of the skin as well, providing our patient with a continuous activity as we mentioned. And for sure, the IUPAN, it's a sterile uh, drape, and uh, can be used under uh, the aseptic uh, technique as well. So the same that we have different types from different size for sure from the IOPAN according to the type of the surgery and the location of application. And at the end of the day, we are uh, dealing with uh, a drape which is come with uh, adhesion. So we have to be careful whenever we are removing it uh, through the technique which is called the slow and low and the slow to uh, avoid any uh, damage you could happen to the patient during the removal of the drape. Uh, in case you find any resistance during the removal, you might add uh, some of the alcohol or uh, normal saline according to the technique that you are follow in uh, removal of the drape and the dressing. Uh, but it's very important to complete this part because it's clarified to use a proper uh, removal technique for the IOPA. So, IUPAN, we cannot use IUPAN if the patient has iodine sensitivity. We cannot use it uh, with a patient uh, under two months for sure. Uh, we, 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 we don't, uh, you don't need to, to stretch the drape because if we do that, it means that after some time it will come back to its original uh, size, leading to a cracking for the uh, patient skin. Uh, so we, we can share with you all this uh, application and removal video for your reference and records at uh, any time. Uh, according to the warming device, so we have a wide range, uh, which is called the um, uh, a bear hugger, a different type of the blanket, uh, intraoperative, postoperative for adult or for pediatric. Uh, we can use it. We can use it uh, intraoperatively or postoperative according to the uh, location and type of surgery. One of the most common uh, blanket, which is full access under body, the patient already lying on the blanket itself, so that we can we can use it with all types of surgery, either in supreme position, prone position, or lateral position. And for sure, the uh, convective, uh, which is a forced ear warming, is much better uh, than the conductive. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the convective can reach uh, about, according to the clinical research, we are talking about 63% of the patient skin because it's relying on a forced ear warming can reach as maximum as we can from the patient skin without affecting the pressure point. Meanwhile, the conducting uh, blanket uh, only warm the uh, areas which is come direct to contact with hair, like uh, clarifying by this uh, picture. On the same time, it will have it. It might put the patient at high risk for the thermal injury by warming the pressure point as well. Uh, for the fluid, we have the ranger wide, uh, the ranger which is a closed system with different cassettes where we need to warm the blood or fluid before we do uh, infusion to our patients. Uh, we have the last video.
this is the last video uh, which is clarifying the uh, importance and the application for the Ravina dressing, uh, which is already covered by uh, Professor Lupani. And after that, uh, we will have we will open for the uh, question and answer part.
Okay, guys, uh, uh, this is the uh, last slides just to share with you uh, for your reference and for your record all this about the uh, solventum uh, solutions that we cover today, uh, starting from Avagard, the Duraprib, Iopan, and Surgical Clipper and uh, Previna. And here you can see uh, whatever product uh, which is already existing with the MOH code, and uh, all of them it is already exist on the marketplace code that uh, you can take a screenshot for all this product for your reference if you'd like to uh, decide to rely on this uh, kind of solutions and the product um, as according uh, as we mentioned at the beginning it, uh, it is already submitted and evaluated and recommended from GDIBC team and Ministry of Health in Saudi where they found out that it would uh, uh, support you as a health care prof professionals and the practitioners in different health care facilities to increase the patient safety and outcomes and reduce the risk of the surgical site infection uh, for sure all the products available in the marketplace code we have only Two or three product has a image code, but we can uh, reach out to the team and Minister of Health in Saudi to facilitate that you got all uh, the product or solution that you would like to uh, to utilize. Uh, it was uh, this was my uh, last slides, and I would like to thank you so much for your time and attention. And please, uh, if you have any uh, any questions, uh, any clarification, as we agreed at the beginning, you might uh, drop it in the chatting box, and we can uh, take it. Uh, all uh, according to the available time uh, of our meeting today. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. It's yours. Please, if you have anything to add, if you'd like to add anything from your side, please go ahead. يعطيك العافية أستاذ حاتم وشكرا للمحاضرة الجميلة يعطيك ألف عافية والآن إن شاء الله الزملاء اللي عنده كويشن إن شاء الله الأستاذ حاتم ممكن من الشات ان نشوف الاسئله اللي اذا كانت متوفره من الزملاء نجيب عليها بس للتذكير عندنا فاينل ستيب اللي هو رابط تقييم الورشه نحتاج صراحه يعني دعم الجميع في المشاركه في تقييم الورشه لاعطاء فيدباك لسبيكر من اجل الكونتينوس امبروفمنت للورك شوب في uh, one question, uh, Dr. Saad Khan, can you please uh, advise for how long you keep the briefing addressing on the patient? Uh, I think uh, Mr. Hatem. Uh, yes, we have uh, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, but just to 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 clarify, uh, we uh, we have uh, our colleague uh, Ashraf Al Awadi is a clinical. Uh, a lead for the Brevina, if, if if you would like to add him, and he can take all the the questions related to Brevina. The other questions related to Duraprep, Iopan, uh, uh, Avagard, I'm I'm ready to take it. So, and Ashraf is already with us on on the call here. طيب خاصية المايك عند سيد أشرف العوادي إذا ممكن تفتح المايك. السلام عليكم عليكم السلام حياك الله سيد حياكم الله والف شكر many thanks everyone i can see interesting questions regarding previna for the first question can you advise for how long you keep a previna dressing on the patients so actually each dressing of previna should be used minimally for two days and maximum seven days Okay, this is for the dressing. For the Brevina machine, uh, it will work for seven days. Okay, uh, so uh, beyond seven days, if um, if the surgeon would like to continue using Brevina for more benefit for the patient, so it, we, we will need to replace the Brevina dressing. So we will uh, remove the, the, the first dressing of Brevina, dispose it, and apply a new one under aseptic technique. I hope I could answer this question. I hope it is clear. Okay. Uh, second question, Previna just for admitted patients. What about if the patient discharged? Uh, actually, Previna uh, are for patients uh, during the admission and after discharge as well. So uh, we uh, we will apply the Previna dressing uh, inside the operation theater. Once we close the surgical incision, we apply it immediately. 
uh, inside the hospital, we can connect it to the uh, Previna disposable therapy unit, or we can connect it to any available VAC machine in the hospital. Okay. Uh, and starting from the uh, discharge time, we will uh, disconnect the Previna dressing from the big VAC machine and connect it to the disposable Previna therapy unit. So it's for both, for inpatients and for outpatient as well, after discharge. I hope I could answer this question as well. Any more questions for Brivina? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, for Brivina, uh, yes, uh, you, you can keep using the dressing up to seven days. So it's maximum seven days. And again, after seven days, you can remove the dressing and apply a new Brivina dressing. If you, uh, if you recommend to use it or would like to use it for like 10 days or two weeks, that will be uh, okay but you need to replace the dressing after seven days. There is another question for, the, for Professor uh, Mahmoud Lubani. Well, unfortunately, Professor Mahmoud is left already, so we will uh, try to uh, move uh, the question to him and then back to you. Sir. Okay, it's on the preoperative screening. Is it mandatory for all types of surgeries like elective emergency? Uh, um, uh, I have some input regarding this question, and 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 uh, and uh, again, um, I know that it's it's mainly for Professor uh, Lubani, but. Um, it, it, yeah, the the preoperative screening is important. It's it's it, uh, uh, mainly Previna is intended to uh, prevent the surgical site complications and occurrences, including surgical site infection, seroma, hematoma, and dehiscence. Uh, and uh, it's mainly for the high risk patients, not for all patients. So preoperative screening is uh, is really uh, recommended. Any more question, Hatem, for for Previna? There is one question: Does the, does the spinal anesthesia and general anesthesia affect the risk of post cesarean wound infection? I don't have answer for this question. Uh, actually, it's uh, the question is not clear enough for 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 me right now. But if you, I I, I will uh, add a, a small comment uh, if I understand the question well. Uh, for the anesthesia, if you are talking about regional or general anesthesia, according to the clinical research, uh, for sure it uh, one of the major complications that uh, it could be increased the risk of the surgical site infection regardless the uh, type of surgery, since uh, the clinical research found out that the hypothermia. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, reduce or weakness the the immunity system of the patient through uh, reduction of the uh, oxygen concentration during the surgery, so that it might increase the uh, risk of the surgical site infection according to the clinical research. So we found we 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 can say that uh, all clinical studies conducted or uh, uh, proven that keeps the patient normal thermia pre and post for sure it will reduce the risk of the surgical site infection. Uh, the question related to uh, in case the patient has a sensitivity to bovidine iodine or caloric zinc gluconate. Uh, actually, uh, this will be uh, the surgeon or doctor judgment, uh, or we can refer it to the internal recommendation from infection control. What should you use uh, in this such a situation? Uh, from the experience from other facilities, some healthcare facility that they might uh, do uh, uh, prepping by normal saline or some of them they are going to uh, make uh, uh, the bovidine iodine very diluted solution uh, but as i mentioned at the beginning uh, we refer this uh, uh, actually for the doctor judgment the surgeon judgment and the internal policy from the infection control in the healthcare facility itself يعطيك العافية أستاذ حاتم بس عشان التايم ممكن إن إحنا آه البروف محمود موجود وعطينا خاصية المايك ممكن نجيب على السؤال حق ال عظيم عظيم أوكي البروف محمود عفوا إيش السؤال؟ 
can there is a question, Doctor, uh, regarding? Um, let's say the chat. Is it the preoperative screening question? Uh, uh, if you can give your yeah. opinion on that day, on the preoperative screening. Yeah, I think I think what uh, what operative yeah preoperative screening. You do need to screen the patients for MSSA and MRSA, and obviously eradicate that before surgery. That is essential. But apart from that, uh, screen them for the, the risk factors. So if they have risk factors, uh, diabetes, for example, you need to check their HbA1c and optimize their diabetic control before surgery. Uh, uh, if they have COPD, you try to them to stop smoking, optimize their respiratory function, uh, respiratory rehabilitation will help. Um, uh, and weight loss uh, is another thing that you could advise them to do if you have time to do it. So uh, preoperative screening of the risk factors and rehabilit rehabilitation of the patients will reduce the risk of infections postoperative. So it is important, but apart from a virology point of view or bacteriology point of view, the only thing you need to screen for is MSSA and MRSA and eradicate them before surgery. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Mahmoud, uh, Mr. Hatim, and uh, Mr. Khalid. But uh, for time, we will open the channel of communication with the speaker. In terms of the questions, all of them are in the chat. We will be able to answer the questions, and we will be able to answer all of them today. We will be able to answer all of them today. آه إن شاء الله إنه الكل استفاد إحنا ننوه مرة ثانية على موضوع تقييم الورشة وموضوع التسجيل آه تسجيل الحضور من أجل إرسال آه شهادات الحضور آه إن شاء الله إن راح نستمر بتقديم بنفس المحاضرات بنفس المحتوى إن شاء الله آه في آه المرات القادمة وشكرا لكم جميعا على حضوركم آه نتمنى من الجميع زي ما ذكرنا آه إنه يعمل التقييم لغرض الـ Continuous Improvement في الـ Education والـ Training regarding the Surgical Site Infection Thank you so much على وقتكم عارفين انه يمكن اخذنا وقت طويل بس فعلا التوبيك يعني يستاهل وراح ان شاء الله يعني يكون في event يعني مماثل في الايام القادمة بإذن الله Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Muhammad, for giving us this opportunity and thank you so much for all attendees for their uh, interaction and uh, and to attend this virtual meeting. Best of luck for all of you and have a good day. Thank you so much, Mr. Hatem.